All right, I guess for most of our audience, uh, Bhai Chung Bhutia needs uh, no introduction. But in this specific uh, sort of context, uh, he has served as a president, if I'm not wrong, Bhai Chung, of the uh, technical committee of the All India Federation, yes. uh, Football Federation. He's also been a contender for the president's spot uh, against the current incumbent, Kalyan Chaube, in the previous elections. Um, he's a member of the technical committee and has resigned from that position owing to, I suppose, Bhai Chung, a lack of uh, sort of consultative uh, kind of governance consensus building that everyone is talking about uh, not that evident in the AIFF in football house I think a lot of wrong things are happening a lot of wrong headlines is happening once Kalyan Chobi took over and uh, you know we've all fought for players to come into sports administration and uh, not just football but all sports and when when people get that opportunity i think it's very important to have uh, a good credential and you need to you know at least when people say that look uh, now sports person heads the federation in any sports and that's the legacy and that's the kind of reputation you need to live but unfortunately with football i think everything has gone wrong and for any footballer or a sports person to head federation uh, you know in future i think they'll always say that we give you chance look at what kalyan chobe has done and it's all been just wrong headlines. It's all been wrong decisions, uh, one after the other. And unfortunately, I think in the last two and a half years or three years, what he is there, we've already have three general secretaries, which is changed. We've already had a lot of controversies, allegations against president on the bribery charges, commission on 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 the on the salary, pulling out of uh, you know the bids of Asia Cup without any consultation, and now which has come is appointing uh, the national team coach chief coach without uh, the technical committee getting full in charge because in AIFF uh, constitution and as you said I've been a technical committee chairman in the past for three four years mm. uh, and we appointed uh, Stephen Constantine and during my uh, technical committee chairman India was ranked 170 plus and we brought down when I left we brought Indian football to within top 100 which was 94. Uh, so, you know, a lot of things and that was the process you so actually do us, it. Take us through that process, Bhai. Uh, uh, of course, we won't uh, get into the whole ranking situation now because it's done in, in the past. But but in terms of the process, because it's also laid down in the yeah. constitution, right? How these, yes. what the purpose of these committees com is and what why so, they are there. So, Federation has always had the technical committee to select the coaches, whether mm. it's under 17, under 19, women's or the senior. Mm. So that's where technical committee has been formed and it's just not now, it's been there for ages. And that's where the rights, um, technical means when you've got a lot of players like I am Bijayan was, uh, is the technical committee chairman. Before that was legend Shyam Thapa and before that I was the technical committee chairman. So that's why you've got technical ex-footballers who are there in the technical committee and mm. they decide they have a meeting and decide who's the right player. And yes, um, executive committee gives us a brief thing about what is the situation if yeah. there is a budget issue yeah. or that is yeah. the kind of budget we can give this is the kind of coaches we want and that's how you select and go in and in this scenario we already have a technical committee which is headed by I am Bijan as a chairman mm. so when you have a technical committee you go through technical committee in this appointment of the national team coach there was special committee formed uh, and that too technical committee was not consulted then you have a executive committee meeting where president comes uh, declares one name and then everybody says yes we agree and then you select that is not the process mm. so my uh, res resigning from technical committee member was you are going against the process then if you don't want to use technical committee and get their advice mm. and then what is the point of having a technical committee mm. so that is where I said to in the meeting as well what is the point having technical when you don't want to use it and you form a special committee and then president comes with your name and then select mm. I am not against an, any individual coach I think it's the process which is uh, which has not been right in selection and selecting and I felt there's no use of then technical committee or being a member member of it. of it yeah so so in this context I mean maybe it's a small side note but uh, the couple last couple of times we spoke to the former head coach Igor Steamach and he said ki bhai I have told the federation ki kisi ko bhejo saath mein national team ke liye particularly for the camps for the senior team right whether it's a technical committee member or somebody from the exco or whoever uh, but nobody came. Uh, so, is the technical committee itself an active uh, kind of entity that proactively and so moto as such looks at these aspects of football? And, and had you kind of, uh, as, a, as a committee, put forward some ideas to the federation as well? 
सी आई फील वेरी सॉरी फॉर आई एम बीजा नोज अ टेक्निकल कमिटी चेयरमैन एंड देर इज अ ऑफिशियल स्टेटमेंट फ्रॉम हिम दैट ही इज गॉट नो आइडिया वेन द कोच एक्सटेंशन इज हैपन वेन द कोच इज बीन रिन्यूड और कोच इज बीन डिस्चार्ज फ्रॉम इज ड्यूटी एंड वी ऑब्वियसली वी आर जस्ट द मेम्बर्स बट इवन अ कमिटी चेयरमैन वॉज नॉट अवेयर एंड यू सीन इज स्टेटमेंट विच इज ऑल ओवर द प्रेस यू वॉज नॉट अवेयर including few weeks ago he said that likely for him he would want to try out indian coaches as well he had mm. named few indian coaches mm. even that was not even discussed with mm. the technical committee members and those coaches were not even discussed as in exco as well where chairman was willing to have a try and have a look and discuss about few indian coaches was done well mm. so those were even not discussed so which is very unfortunate that you know even the chairman is not aware of it we've been saying that during the matches or camps or at least a technical committee chairman could attend those matches yeah. or camps uh, and see the team what's happening and be in touch with with the coach which is also not happened coach players Now, as well yeah uh, so and that is always been the, the advice uh, from our side the, the but most not also, happening because roadblock kahan uh, pe because these guys are not exit the prison Uh, and the entire team were there are not even bothered they are not even listening to it now even right. technical committee is not aware uh, everything is getting bypassed and mm. he's just been informed and he has to just say yes mm. Mm. which is a very unfortunate thing even you know it's not first time that coaches have been sacked or their their contract is shortened there have been lot of foreign coaches big names whose contract had left but they had to leave in between yeah. and that happened through a lot of better management there was a golden handshake with lot of big coaches who were there in india mm. and this stemak thing as well could have been handled much better, much better. in mu- much better way i think it was a, it was everything you know was was done it very harsh without proper thinking proper manage uh, man management was not there mm. the management from the federation wasn't there and i think this led to a very bad uh, exit for stemak and it's which has also been very bad for indian football as such yeah definitely not positive sort of headlines even the international media that was covering it uh, not covering indian football for any good reason really uh, as a former member of the committee and as someone who has been involved in the sport for so many years you're also a pandit on on television commenting on on uh, world football as as it is Uh, what do you make of the decision also to have this hybrid model where the coach will be looking after both the senior team as well as a club side at least uh, in the beginning you know i i think usually in modern football we don't see that in the past there has been lot of situations where you know coaches have uh, club and country but for india i think uh, there's not so much of load in terms of club football right now because he's with isl and uh, if if his club is willing to release him and allow then i think it's fine because usually the clubs don't allow it's, it's not the federation it's yeah. the clubs yeah. that because yeah. clubs when you pay so much of salary you build a team around you know players who he signed as a coach and you've spent so much of money for players and you're looking at good result mm. the clubs usually don't allow a coach to deal with the national team if he's already signed and uh, is working with the club football because club football is every day you're training every day you're working out you're train uh, you know setting up a training model tomorrow next day you're looking at other teams what kind of style you play you're doing a lot of tactical thing for your training you're preparing for the matches so in that scenario it becomes very difficult for club coaches to really work for the federation mm. and lot of times you don't see clubs releasing them and biggest example is now i think they're all looking for england manager after gareth southgate <laughs> newcastle has refused to release forget do, doing duel refused to release because you know they they think that he signed and they've got yeah. all plans they're talking to pep gordel gordel and uh, even i'm sure he's not man city is not going to let him do one year uh, both both england and man city i i'm sure they would not allow that so it's 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 very it does not happen in in in, in today's football but let's see because uh, india is special because we don't have so much of club commitment in isl starts only i think later on this pre season so he's got i think which is also four or five months of isl yeah, it's yeah. not a not nine a f- month like yeah. uh, other european countries or you know south american so maybe you you never know how it is going to work but usually in if you're looking at bigger countries and uh, today's football you you don't see that but i think in india because isl is also just four five months so maybe things can be worked out i'm it's yet to see let's see how it goes mm. yeah because on the one hand the federation is saying that also the need to expand the season make it longer etc etc right uh, and on the other hand you have this so not necessarily 
going in sync the two decisions mm. as as you have more domestic football hopefully happening which also yes. they are saying they want to do see that that is where that is why i think technical committee was very important to discuss this issue under bijayan's leadership mm. maybe we could have had 6 months mm. uh, of give it to somebody a local mm. say as somebody local coach to handle 6 months and then when he finishes with goa his contract gets over yeah. then we can obviously offer him yeah. so that is way you you usually do it uh, have a temporary manage manager for a certain period of time because mm. uh, if you're looking at indian football right now we don't have any major tournament as such we, know, we don't have e- uh, asian efc qualifiers we don't have world cup qualifiers mm. so there's no <laughs> major tournament as such where you know the big names of asian footballers are going to come and play mm. so we are only looking at smaller tournaments and Vietnam, which is you know, but you might not have full professional players from other countries playing that tournament. So you've got small, small, small tournament, which could be easily handled by say maybe whether it's a foreign or a Indian coaches, somebody or not, temporary six months basis. Right. But somebody yeah, is already engaged. Yeah. And so you have I think these are the things which it has to be discussed mm. uh, and see what is best for Indian football and then take it. I'm not saying you know the coach right now is. is is raw is bad i is is i think at look looking at his credentials it looks very very impressive yeah but um, yeah sometimes you could take that step you could speak to the coach and say after 6 months are you okay to come in you know until that time we were looking at somebody to take over mm. or sit with him and he could refer to some mm. somebody mm. who's going to be his mm. assistant yeah. uh, his assistant could lead and take it forward and then yeah. he could come in and work with the same coach who's going to as soon as he comes in then the coach who is in charge temporarily becomes his assistant so those are things technically and in that sense discuss. having mahesh there uh, you know kind of uh, yeah anybody i think provide uh, that continuity na in, in the process and, and also coach ke time bhi wahi tha and, and, yeah, and also now what we don't know is what is coach right now the present coach who's been uh, Ma- 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 manolo marquez Ma- 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 marquez we don't know what is he looking at his assistant mm. does he want his own assistant does mm. he want indian assistant mm. is he mm. looking to get his own set of coaches we don't know that yeah. so those things should have been spoke, spoken freely with him mm. uh, when we appoint him as a coach mm. and then till the time he's not looking after this team he's got contract with fc goa his assistant whoever he wants to work yeah. with can take over 6 months so that this coach's assistant can fully take control and look at it yeah. and then he can focus there and then as soon as he comes in whichever assistant he wants to keep mm. they could have taken temporary in charge for some, at least for the next 6 months mm. so these are things which technically could have been sorted out easily I mean, finally uh, bhai the senior men's team now gets a fair bit of media attention iske bare mein to hum baat karte hain uh, when steam match went it was headlines all over all of that stuff uh, but uh, like you correctly pointed out right at the beginning of the show that the, the, the committee in the federation is responsible for all national teams um, and i have seen this contradiction when i when when i was asking the president about the vision 2047 Uh, particularly in the context of women's football and how many actually women were part of this consultative process uh, he made a very uh, what i think is a sexist remark saying indian women are not prepared for this right now that's why we we have people from outside coming and doing it so on the uh, on the one hand that is his opinion on the other hand a woman's woman uh chauba devi has been the head coach of the senior national team before that rocky uh, memol was the head coach so you are giving uh, coaches those opportunities um now that chauba's tenure is likely to end uh, after these myanmar results uh what kind of attention is actually being paid to the women's senior team and and the coaching there because they are ranked much higher than the men's team and they have some possibility of at least competing in asia No, I've always said it in record in the past, uh, and if you look at uh, and search, I think you'll get a lot of my statement. I, I clearly said that women's football in India is going to play World Cup much faster than the men's men's playing the World Cup. Yeah, if we which, try to promote which, it, right? Like yeah, which I feel is right. If we give that kind of support and the uh, support, exposure, infrastructure development, uh, leagues. I think a lot of that to uh, grassroots which we need to do for women's football. Mm. I think it's got much more opportunity for Indian women to play World Cup more than and in terms of ranking I think it's much better ranked than men's football as well. Yeah. Uh look at today I feel sorry for women's football because there's no grassroots anywhere there's no academies as such. 
uh, everybody's only focus uh, indian women's league have started but uh, first year was good but second year it went into a lot of controversies in terms of facilities infrastructure they were put into a school where there was no proper bathroom there was no proper food with that is your indian women's league which is the highest league mm. that had issues so which is very unfortunate what's happening so i think if we can start focusing on like i you know kalyan president thinks he needs to have a goalkeeper academy mm. which is great but i don't know in football you know tomorrow you might then somebody might say strikers ka we are not scoring goals we need an academy in striker i would say that how would you go you know pole because it's a team sport at the end so how can you have academies only for goalkeeper or only for striker that's a different i don't know what is thought into that mm. but i think more than doing a goalkeepers football academy you've already got academies in academies when you do academy you have to take players from every each position, position each position to make sure that you're developing overall team as goalkeeper yeah. defenders and strikers yeah. so that is the th- thing with all the academies across india and i run an academy we do that i can't only take strikers mm. and form a good academy team so we got to select goalkeepers as well and we have goalkeepers goalkeeping coach as well so instead of spending that money where you want to do goalkeeping academy and pay huge amount to oliver khan and then you're saying we national team ke liye pay coach ke liye we don't have budget we can't bring expensive coach because we've got to cut budget yeah. here you're trying to spend again another few crores to get Ali- oliver khan is not going to come cheap mm-hmm. so i don't understand rather than spend that money to develop a nice academy for women i mm. think let's give girls football women football a chance we don't have any academies across yeah. um, baichung butia football academy just started first residential girls football academy in in nasik but apart from that we don't have residential football academies either with sai government of india sports ministry or either with the uh, all india football federation or any clubs as such residential i am not aware that is in good level mm. so let's start through federation that money which he wants to put it into you know uh, into women's football academy girls football academy yeah. under 15 and develop from there and what is looking at coaches in terms of goalkeeping coach make sure that every academy that is playing put a criteria there that you need to have certain number of goalkeepers you need to have certain number of goalkeeper coaches mm. with with license mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then you bring an expert to teach those coaches train the coaches and those yeah. coaches will train i think a lot of those processes are already happening because i mean everyone realizes the importance of a goalkeeper in the team i think yeah, so but uh, again everybody also should realize the importance of striker in the team yeah so now sunil <laughs> is not there we don't have any striker so are you going to have strikers academy as well so you know no, i get i get what you're saying i get what you're saying so so unfortunately uh, in your assessment then having a footballer in charge isn't doing very much in from what evidence we've seen it's been uh, a disaster so far and which is not good for players like us who are trying to get into federation uh, and lot of not just footballers other sports person who are trying to get into federation to say that look players can run a federation uh, any any federation properly and which has not been a great benchmark especially in football under kalya yeah thanks very much bhaijung always always fun talking to you and always good to have you on the show uh i think uh, there you have it uh, disastrous is how bhaijung butia has uh, sort of summed up Uh, the presidency of Kalyan Chobi so far from a footballing uh, technical footballing decision making uh, kind of process we'll carry on this conversation uh, on 420 grams